So uh, our next uh, our experiment now is about uh, heat transfer through lagged pipe apparatus. Uh, the objective of this uh, experiment is to determine the thermal conductivity of the insulation around the pipe. So uh, what we need to do is uh, there is this setup in which there is a rod inside. I am showing a side side view uh, of this particular apparatus. So if you look at if you look at the side we. In the inside, uh, so I'm drawing what the components are of this particular apparatus. So at the uh, in the center of the pipe, there is a rod on which there is a coil which is heated, and that is kept inside a hollow pipe, which in turn is insulated by a layer of insulation, and there is another added layer of insulation on top of it. So this is what the apparatus is. In the center, there is a rod over which there is a wire which provide which is heated up and that is this entire thing is placed at the center of a tube hollow tube and that hollow tube has two layers of insulation this and this so what we need to do is we need to find the thermal conductivity of layer 1 and layer 2 so if we if we draw it like this with respect to radius uh, so the first the first, I mean, the pipe is at a radius of R1. Then the another insulation is at a radius of R2, and the final insulation layer is at the radius of R3 from the center of the pipe. So we know this relation in thermo, uh, sorry, in heat transfer, that the heat flux is 2 pi K L T1 minus T2 plus natural law natural law R2 by R1. So we need to find this K. That is unknown. We can calculate Q, uh, the heat flux, using the amount of heat we are transferring to the system. That will be equal to voltage times the current. So that value of Q uh, we can get from the experiment. We know R2 and R1 that is given in the data. So uh, we know the value at which. Okay. So this says the location of thermocouples at 1, 2, 3. Uh, location of thermocouple 1, 2, 3 at radius 30 millimeter. Location of thermocouples 4, 5, 6 at 52, and again 7, 8, 9 at 55. So at each of these layers, as I mentioned, I will draw it again, there is that center rod, then there is the hollow pipe, there is one layer of insulation, another layer of insulation. So on at the, uh, at the inside wall of the pipe, there are three thermocouples, which tell us the temperature of the hollow pipe, temperature of the surface of the hollow pipe. So this is T1, T2, T3, and again on the insulation, we have another three more thermocouples, so that will be T4, T5. T6 that will give us the temperature of the insulation layer of the of the first insulation layer and again on the final one we have T7, T8, T9 these thermocouples will give us the temperature on the second layer of the insulation. So now we have the heat flux calculated from the amount of voltage and current we are passing to the system. K we do not know, L we know, the length of the rod is given, length of the pipe is given as 500 millimeters so that too we know. T1 and T2 we will know by taking the average of these three thermocouples for each surface. So if I take the average of T1, T2, T3, I will get the surface temperature of this layer. Then I take the average of T4, T5 and T6, I will get the surface temperature of the first layer of insulation. Similarly, I can get the uh, temperature of the second layer of insulation. So this temperature difference also we know, from, we will know from the experiment. R2 and R1 we know. So using those values, I will be able to calculate the value of K. So uh, let's move on to the experiment. This is the lagged pipe which was drawn in the figure. So in that within this pipe uh, we have the layers of insulation. So if we look at it sideways and if this had been open we would be, we would be able to see a central rod which, which is getting heated up. Then there are two layers of insulation and then find the entire thing is covered within a case. So as I said we have three thermocouples on each layer, uh, three thermocouples on the hollow pipe and three thermocouples on the first layer of insulation again three more on the second layer of insulation. So we can look at the value of each of those thermocouples by moving this knob here. So if this is at T1 it shows me the value of the first thermocouple in this. Then T2 will give me the value of the second thermocouple similarly T3 like that I can go all the way to T9 and note down all the values. This is how we control the amount of heat which is supplied to the lagged pipe. So I told you the central rod gets heated up because there is a coil of wire around it. So I am supplying the voltage difference to the coil of wire by moving this knob over here. So 
so when i change this knob, when i uh, rotate this knob i am able to collect uh, i am able to uh, change the value of voltage over here so right now this is at 100 so that shows that it is at 100 so according to the voltage difference some amount of current is flowing so i know the amount of heat that is going into that rod is equal to the multiplication of this these two uh, voltage times current that will give me the amount of heat in watt that is being transferred to the uh, central rod so we need to give some time for the entire vacuum to reach steady state because the equation that I told you in the beginning that is valid only for 1D, one dimensional heat transfer for the case of a steady state. So for this to be steady, steady state, I need to give, uh, give it some time so that it comes to steady state with the surroundings. So once I have set the value of voltage to let's say 100, I need to give it I need to give it some time so that it reaches steady state and I can know that it will reach steady state by noting down the value of temperature at each of those layers. So with time if the value of the temperature at each of those layers start uh, stop changing then I will know that the system has reached steady state. So let us see uh, the values right now. So it has not much time has passed and you can look. So first I will note down T1 so that is 35. T2 is 43, no, sorry, uh, 20, uh, 28, so it was fluctuating. T3 is 28, then I have to take the average of all these, then I move on to the next layer of insulation, so that is T4, so that is 28, T5, 20. Eight, T6 is 28 so all the thermocouples on the first layer of insulation they have uniform values then I move on to T7 so that is again 28 so I think not much of heating has happened un until now because it has been left on only for a few minutes this is again 28 so this is about 28. So uh, the values are pretty much consistent because the, re the heat has not been conducted because not much time has, has been given initially. Uh, it, uh, I only let the instrument on for about 5 minutes. So we need to leave it on for, uh, for a certain time so that the heat can get conducted from within the center rod to the outside layers. And uh, so once we have that, we need to take the we need to take the readings at every 10 minutes and once the variation stops happening we know that the system has reached steady state so at that point i'll calculate the value of ta tb and tc so that gives me this ta gives me the average temperature of the inside pipe tb gives me the average temperature of the first layer of insulation tc gives me the average temperature of the using the average values of temperatures calculated at the uh, at the inside wall of the pipe first layer of insulation and second layer of insulation we will be able to calculate the thermal conductivity using the equation which we mentioned earlier and we also need to see the variation of temperature with respect to the radial distance so we can have a plot which will uh, visualize that for us so at the three different radii that we have we need to plot the TA average, TB average and TC average because with respect to the radius the temperature will obviously decrease because, uh, because the job of the insulation is to restrict the amount of heat transfer. So, uh, this is, uh, we have accomplished the amount of experiment regarding the lab.